City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I could pick some spin and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is going to be the dress for today, and I've been wanting to make this. I actually wanted to make this dress when I was going to make this one, but in the pattern on the back, it says you can only use a 60 inch wide fabric. But it also calls for cotton blends and things like that as a fabric choice. And you know, there's not very many 60 inch wide cotton blend fabrics. And I got to looking at it and the reason is because of the sleeve placement. So I am going to place my sleeve in a different way. Instead of going this way, I'm gonna place it that way in my fabric. And I'm gonna make it work with 45 inch fabric. So there you go. This is what I'm gonna be using. It is 100% cotton. Yes, it is a winter theme, but you know what? If you squint your eyes, they don't look like snowflakes. They look like fun stars and things. So this is gonna be my main fabric, but I'm concerned that I might not have enough because what it asks for is four and a half yard, or just over four yards of 60 inch wide fabric. So what I'm planning on is doing part of it out of this um, unbleached light canvas fabric. And I'll show you how I'm gonna break it down, but I think this is gonna be fun. So um, yeah, let me turn the camera down and let's get started. Alrighty, so here's my little diagram. So everything that I have colored green is this, everything that is blank is this, okay? And so what I'm planning on it's basically the sleeves, um, most of the bodice on the back. There's like this piece that goes around here and everything. But on the front, I'm going to use the unbleached canvas for this whole place coming down here. Okay, and then I'm also gonna use it for the top ruffle, which is smaller, and then use the cotton for this. Now this looks like an extremely long dress. I have not measured myself to see how long it is, but you can tell dress uh, A is what we're going for, and dress A is slightly longer than their dress B. And for my size, and again, I'm cutting out 16 because that's me, it says that the length no, no, dress B is longer. Anyway, it says that the length is 52 and three quarter inches. So I'm going to go measure from the base of my neck to that measurement and see how far off I am. Alrighty, so what I do, this is how I do it, you know, measuring by yourself, is I put a clothespin where that measurement is because that's going to weigh it down. It'd be easy to see. And then up on this end, I just hold that up to the base of my neck. So by doing that, I could see that basically if this was that mark, this was my floor. It's very long. I don't want it that long. I am going to make it four inches shorter. So um, when I'm cutting out my pattern, I'm gonna make that adjustment probably on this bottom layer because it's a whole lot longer than the middle layer. And I think that that's gonna be just fine. So let me go ahead and get started cutting out my pattern. All right, so I've got my long piece here and I am going to actually cut um, five inches off of it. And that is because I have a pretty much standard length that I've figured out that I can walk upstairs and not have to lift my skirt at. And um, I am constantly going up and down the stairs in this house and everything. And so that is what I like to keep my skirts at that level or above, unless it's a special occasion type of a thing. So anyhow, I used my cutting line for my view 
subtract it off five inches and I'm just going to cut it straight across here on my new cutting line just like that now on my pattern instruction sheet I went through last night and kind of color-coded which pieces I need to cut out of what and predominantly out of my green it's this huge sleeve piece and three of these on fold. So when I'm cutting them out, I'm gonna cut those two out first, and then if I have room left over, I will add my other small pieces. That's my plan. So let me go ahead, get this cut out, and I'm gonna cut out my green fabric. So just to let you know, this sleeve pattern, it's huge. It's probably, I don't know, in, in a yard and a third or so long, um, and it's very, very deep. At first I was thinking of shortening it, but decided to go for the full glam here. Um, I wanted to tell you I have pre-washed, pre-dried, pre-shrunk all of my fabrics. And um, this one, it's just a regular 100% cotton, you know, calico type fabric. And so it's very stable. It's very stable, it's stable that way, it's stable this way. This isn't going to be a problem by orienting it 90 degrees different. Um, if this was one of my finicky fabrics, you know, that stretch one way or have crinkles or something like that, this wouldn't work. But for something like this, I think it's going to be just fine. Okay, so I am at the tail end of my green and I only have enough space to cut two of these on a fold. So I'm going to piece the other one. Um, now, the good thing is this fabric is not one directional. It has all these little designs, but they're the same way this way is this way. So if I have to turn a certain piece another way there's no nap there's nothing involved that way and i should be able to make this work um but just to let you know i started out with uh just over four yards of this 45 inch fabric so definitely would have been short because i haven't even cut out the bodice pieces or that other ruffle that i'm going to do out of the other fabric so all right so just so you know i cut one out on the fold as i should the rest of it i have torn into 19 inch tall segments. My pattern piece is 18 inches tall, so I figure if I do 19 inches, I can get nice clean cuts and everything. So now I'm just going to put all of my little 19 inch tall strips together, sew them together. You know, these are selvages, so I can just press those open. If it's a raw edge, I'll serge it, press everything open, and then use that big long strip uh, to cut out my ruffle. So if you've been here for a bit, you know this is my main machine. She is my Meister from about 1950. That was my grandmother's. And I'm setting her aside. I put her in a, a case here because I am going to be giving her a major facelift. Mechanically, she's great. But I think it's time to make her look a little bit more beautiful. So I'll let you be surprised when she's all done what she looks like. I'm going to show you the machine that I'm going to be using. This is a 1938 Singer 201. I've spent the last week uh, remaking the motor. I had to strip out all the old grease, pull out the gears, pull out the motor, redo wiring and brushes and everything, and she is good to go. So I am going to be using her. She has the potted motor, just like my Singer 15, so I was able to use my uh, feet and power cord on the outside that I use on my 15. So that works really well. So this is what I'm going to be using for now. So you might recognize this unbleached canvas from a few different projects. This was the skirt with the elastic waist that I painted the uh, pockets like maritime flags on. And this was also those pants with the um, yoke that I painted flowers all over. So it seems to inspire painting. I'm not going to paint this because the other fabric has enough design as is, but yeah, I'm still using it up. I think I have one more curtain out of this. So curtains are fabulous for getting fabric from, you know, they can find all kinds. I've had the 
I've gone through velvet curtains. I've gone through um, taffeta curtains. I've gone through all kinds of curtains. Huge pieces makes really cool, extravagant things. And usually at a thrift store, they're pretty cheap. So. All right, so everything's cut out. Time to get started. Um, there is a lot of gathering in this dress. So one of the first things they go through is in their general instructions are alternate ways to do gathering, which is basically just regular gathering or gathering over cord. What I am going to be doing is regular gathering, and I'm telling you this now because this is what I'm going to do for every single gathering stitch in here. Um, and in the bobbin, as you have probably seen before, I am using super heavy duty thread, okay? When you put a thicker, heavier thread in the bobbin, the bobbin thread is easier to pull for gathers for one. Two, you know it's not going to pop. But also with a thicker thread in the bobbin than in the needle, usually your bobbin thread ends up being tighter, which actually makes the, bo the, bo the, bo the bobbin thread more straight instead of going up and down. Okay, which makes it even easier to pull. So the thread I'm using is this. It's just a very, very strong, strong thread. It's a fishing line, but that doesn't mean anything. It's basically the weight of like a buttonhole thread or something like that. Something strong. This is a nylon, but get something very strong. That you have no worries that it's going to pop. I have a bobbin that I've loaded with it, and that's what I do. I use this not in my needle. It does terribly if you try to use it in your needle, use it in your bobbin. So with that aside as to my gathering method, um, the other thing is this dress is closed up in the back with a zipper. And usually I want to do my zipper separately before the dress is totally circular. I want to put it in while it's flat. This dress is put together in such a creative kind of way that that is not going to be possible. There's just, there's just no way you can alter the steps in any meaningful kind of way so that you're just dealing with a flat back to put the zipper in. So we're going to have to put the zipper in when they say to put it in. So that is sad for me. And other than that, I think we're about ready to get started. So the first thing that I need to do is get my bodice pieces out here. Okay, so getting my piece out here, first thing I'm gonna do is start marking it. So the way that I mark everything is if there's a circle, I punch it out with my leather or hole punch. I put a scrap of leather, under the tissue paper on top of the fabric so that it doesn't punch through the fabric, okay? So I'm gonna punch those out and then I'm using a heat erasable pen to just reach through that hole I punched and mark whatever dot is there. For my notches, I'm just gonna stick my scissors into that little slot. It's just under a quarter inch deep and just clip it. Okay, now this fabric is going to fray. It is just a woven cotton canvas. So I will be surging around all of my pieces on this pattern. Um, this dot up here is a sleeve placement dot, so I'm gonna mark that also. So once I get all of this marked, I need to do some stay stitches. And the stay stitches are just straight stitches that I put in at about half an inch seam allowance, just slightly in from my regular seam so it doesn't show. And it's to keep anything cut on a diagonal specifically from wanting to stretch out of shape. So since this is kind of a princess seam, we're going to be running them up here on this side, down to this dot, and over, okay? So I am just drawing a line just inside this dot so I have a better idea of where my stay stitches are to go because sometimes it is a little bit iffy when you're not in a regular, you know, use your gauge on your machine kind of territory there. Okay, so 
for my stay stitches then, it's going to be coming through here all the way down to there on both sides and starting up here on the shoulder, coming down, cutting over and heading back up that way. Once I get my stay stitches in, I'm going to be surging all the way around the edge just to keep it from fraying. All right, so I've done my first stay stitch and I did it and I was like, oh, this is a what in the world were you thinking? I had green thread in here to kind of match the other fabric and didn't even think about it. So I pulled out my green thread. I'm going to be using white and everything. So I've done my side over, oh, it blends so well over here. But I just wanted to run one little seam on this 201. I'm so glad her rebuild turned out so well. But if you've never sewn on a 201, they are so smooth. So smooth. All they do is a straight stitch, but they are amazing. Lots of times if you see them like on Marketplace or something for sale, they don't even know what they are, but I recommend them. If you are looking for one, look for, and you're in the U.S., in the U.S., look for a light that is built in on the front. Okay, this is all one big molded piece here. And in the U.S., look for a potted motor on the back. Those are two really easy telltale signs, and it has an up and down lever here that you can, you can see. Even if they don't tell you a model number, you can usually figure out what they are from a couple pictures that way. So highly recommended. So I wanted to show you uh, early on here, when I say I'm gonna serge all the way around, I'm gonna serge it so that I have nice clean edges, but I don't really take off any fabric. So my pattern piece is gonna stay the same size. So once again, you've probably seen this before, but I'm going to show you how I do that. And this is a good example because we have both inside corners and outside corners. All right, so this is obviously just a little uh, Singer serger, so not nearly as quiet and smooth as the 201, but it will work. So what I need to do is I am surging so that the edge, oops, hang on so that the edge of my fabric is basically right inside that blade. If anything is getting cut off, it's just, you know, little threads and stuff. Ah, oh, this fabric does not want to behave. Okay, so when I get up to a corner, and this is a very small corner, I'm gonna sew all the way until my needle gets just past the last bit of fabric right there, okay? Lift up my needle. Lift up the presser foot, turn it, put it back down, and keep going. So coming up here to the shoulder corner, it's going to be a lot more obvious. I'm going until my needle is just past, maybe like one stitch past the fabric. With my needle up, presser foot up, turn everything, stick it all, on, stick it all back down and keep going. So now I'm coming down the inside of the neckline here and for an inside corner like this it's a lot easier actually. And when I get close, see it just wants to go over to the side. When I get close all I do is open this up flat. Okay, so I flatten it all out and just keep on going with again with my blade just outside of it. So what I have on the inside is this is all surged. It's going to be fine, um, especially because these seams are exposed in this pattern for some reason. Um, but I don't have a lot of extra threads going on. And up here, these corners, these corners are nice and sharp and clean. I don't have a lot of extra, whoops, I missed a spot there. I don't have a lot of extra stuff going on there that I need to clip off, no big tails or anything. So that's what I mean when I say I'm gonna surge around everything because I'm gonna do that for just about all of the fabric in this project. And usually I get comments asking, well, didn't you just cut off all of your notches? Well, no, because I can still see them. And if it's a really busy or thick fabric and I can't, I usually leave the pattern piece 
of what the piece that I'm dealing with handy so that I can match it up and then once you know what you're looking for it's easier to see but on this fabric you know you can see the notches really easily still there so that's what I do I'm gonna go ahead and iron it I'm probably going to be erasing my dots but I can put them back really quick I just need to get some of these wrinkles out of this fabric <coughs> Okay, so this piece here is all accomplished at this point. When I ironed it, I lightly sprayed it with some starch just to give it some body because it was not acting very agreeably. It was shaping out of sorts. So by giving it some sizing and everything right now, it's not stiff, but it's gonna hold itself together a little easier. So putting that aside, I need to work on the back. So just like on the front, I'm gonna clip my notches. There's a dot right here I'm gonna punch out and mark. And then I need to do some stay stitching in this curve. So again, at about a half inch seam allowance here. And then surge all the way around each piece. So let me get all of that done and I will be right back. I just realized I'm supposed to also stay stitch around the back of the neckline. I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these, stay stitch them. And then once that is done, pin the back to the front at the shoulder. Sew this at five eighths of an inch and press this seam allowance open, just like that. All right, so I have this mat on my floor, that pad there. It's like the big loop soft part of Velcro. I don't know if you can see. I've had this. This thing is probably about 50 years old. It's They still make them. I don't remember what they're called. But basically, I have that rub, the big outside rubber part. I just have that screwed to my floor, you know, because I can. So, because I hate kicking around my looking for my presser feet. I have to put a piece of the hard part of Velcro on the back of my presser foot and then it sticks to the mat. So when I'm switching out different machines and different presser foots, I have to stick that on there or else it will drive me crazy. So now I can just push it down. It's going to stick. It's not going to go anywhere. Very happy. So with that done, the next thing was tack sleeve. The sleeve is huge. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clip my notches, draw my circles and everything on there, and take the pieces after they're marked over and surge all the way around the outside edge of both of my sleeves. So this whole part up here is going to be gathered, okay? And so I need to uh, surge it first because if you're gathering that much over an edge that is not surged you're going to be pulling threads out everywhere. So let me go ahead and do that. Mark my circles, clip my notches, surge the whole thing. Okay so before I take my paper off I want to show you usually on the back there's a double notch and on the front there's one notch on sleeves. Not the case for this one. And it doesn't even have it written anywhere on here what is front and back. But I'll show you the way I'm going to figure it out is by using my bodice piece. So my back bodice piece has one notch here. My front bodice piece has two notches there. And that's how it's going to mark up. This side has two notches to match there. This side has one notch to match there. So before I move anything, I am drawing a B on the back of this pattern. And I will also, after I'm done ripping my pattern, also draw the big letter B over here so I can keep track of what is the back because it's not indicated really clearly. Welcome back. It has actually been a few days since I last recorded, but I want to show you at this point, I have my gathering stitches in and I'm going to go ahead and start getting them attached to my bodice piece. So very quickly, because my battery's running low, first I'm gonna start with matching up my shoulder seam. Come on, fingers. Okay, and then there's no notch here to here. So the next dot here is gonna match up over here. So it's kind of an odd position, so I'm just sticking a pin through that dot and this one so that they will line up because it's kind of an awkward angle right there. 
then I have a notch and then the very bottom and of course on the other side I'm doing the same thing the only difference is there are two notches instead of one so let me get this pinned up and we can start gathering the sleeve on okay so now that I have everything pinned together I am just going to start by pulling my very strong bobbin threads on each side up to this center shoulder point so I'll pull these strings together up to that point and over here I'll pull these strings together up to this point and just get it so that it's nice and uh, laying nice and flat first. I don't worry about getting them all distributed and pinned down first, just making sure that each little section has the right amount of gathers. Alrighty, so I have this half pretty much gathered just between the notches. So now I take everything between these two notches and just kind of average it out and pin it every two, every couple inches and then the same thing take what's in here average that out because it seems like between some sections they want fuller gathers than others so just to be safe it's easier for me to do it one little section at a time so like right here it doesn't have to be exact obviously but just closely pin it you know go down another inch or two and make another pin when I sew it I am going to be sewing it so that the ruffle side is up so that I can be very careful to make sure that all of my little gathers are laying correctly and not wanting to go like that on me so now that I have it all pinned together I'm going to sew this entire seam at a 5 8 inch seam allowance trying to be very careful. Once I have it sewn, I'm going to press all the gathers underneath towards the center bodice. Okay, so I want to show you kind of what it's looking like right now. And so underneath here, you can see I have pressed my seam allowances underneath here. Part of me wants to come back and top stitch here, but they don't call for it in the instructions. So for right now, I am not going to. But I wanted to point out in the instructions in the very beginning under the general part, they're very, very concerned that when you put, press your gathers that you don't press outside of it because they don't want you to flatten out your gathers at all. Okay, that's them. I want to flatten out my gathers. I don't really want the whole poof um, aspect of this. I like gathers, but I did press all the way over, probably about an inch into it. So if you can see, mine are slightly flattened and that is because that's the way I want it. So the next step though is to sew the underarm. So when I fold my massive piece here in half, Oh, there's a pin there. I can just match up the underarm. There is a notch over here. You know, match up the corners, corners, notch. Sew this whole thing at five eighths. This is so big and loose. I'm thinking that's why there's no reinforcement here. So both of my underarm seams, I'm going to go ahead and sew them at five eighths. After that, I'm going to be making some clips right here so that it'll open easier and then press this seam allowance open. Good morning and welcome to a very rainy morning and again new clothes new day I've got lots of projects going on so I'm sticking this project here in the middle of it but I just have this bodice pinned onto my dress form because I wanted to get an idea exactly how tight fitting this is and down here at the waist it's fairly snug I mean it's not snug snug but it's fair it's it's form fitting down here at the waist now up you go up a little bit and where all of these sleeves are you can see it's extremely full so that's nice that will help because um, it'll be a lot more forgiving as far as a bust measurement plus you know no underarm grabbing so this is the back um, you know it's nice this is the front I think that it's coming together pretty well um, I don't mind that I pressed my gathers flatter 
I think that that works for me, especially for this fabric. Um, I think, and I, with this fabric, I think the more I wash it and the more worn and softer it gets, the more they're gonna wanna just drape anyway. I believe the next step we're gonna do is there's like a midriff band, kind of like a belt looking band. And there's, there's also a placket that buttons go on. This whole placket here, it's strictly ornamental. Um, the buttons that are on there, just ornamental. And so because of that, I actually have some buttons that kind of match this color green, but they're very, very vintage. Um, I found them in a jar that was from the 1920s, so they were pre-1920s at some point, I don't know, but they're like a very early plastic. So because of that, they're not really strong, but for just a decorative button, I think it's gonna work well. So let me turn you back to the table. I just checked the pattern and actually what we're going to be doing is the bottom of the sleeve and again it's a very full sleeve with an elastic cuff. There seems to be a lot of those in my life right now but that's okay. I love them. They're very versatile for me. All right so the pattern gives you this sleeve guide and so that is the length I am cutting my quarter inch elastic. I'm going to cut two of these. You know it's an approximate thing, so if you need to adjust that, you can adjust that. What I'm gonna need to do is, they want you to press under the edge at about 5 8 of an inch. Again, I am going to eyeball this. I think that's gonna be fine. And um, so what I'm gonna do is turn it under, a few key points, and then just press it so that I have a nice crease at this 5 8 inch-ish position um, on both sleeves. I'm doing this in two different steps instead of just turning, turning, and pin because the sleeve, it's not flat at the bottom. Um, the front part is higher than the back part, so it's got this wave thing going. Who knows why they're doing what they're doing? All I know is at this point, I am going to turn this edge under just so that it hides my surging, and that should give me a seam allowance that is still wide enough that I'll be able to pull my elastic through. Okay, so what I'm using here is a little half inch wide piece of stitch witchery, fusible bonds, whatever you want to call it. And I am just gonna rip a piece, you know, maybe about an inch and a half long, like that. Stick it underneath the seam allowance and press it down. Okay, and do that on each side. And that will help me keep my sanity while I'm threading the elastic through here. Okay, so now these aren't gonna go anywhere. So I can go ahead and proceed as I was by turning up, turning up, and then pinning. So I'm going to end up with a casing like this, you know, that's about half an inch wide. Okay, so now that I have it pinned all the way around, I'm just going to edge stitch it. You know, I'm gonna leave inside this little part open so that I can thread my elastic through there. I'm just gonna run an edge stitch right along here on both sleeves. Okay, so I've got my bodkin here loaded with my elastic and I am just gonna start threading it through um, one little step at a time. But my bodkin, you know, it's fairly thick. So that's why when I'm making Casings, I want to make sure that I don't cut myself too short. And honestly, if your casing is an eighth of an inch wider than what they say, but you can fit your bodkin through, it's not really gonna make a big difference at all in the garment. And it will make your life easier, so why not? So I'm pinning the tail of my elastic on here just so it doesn't get sucked in. I'm gonna continue all the way around until I can pull it out the other side. Okay, so here it is, coming back out the other side here. Again, highly recommend if you're gonna be doing it to fuse down or sew down or something, those little seam allowances so they don't get messed up. So now this is very thin elastic. I'm just going to overlap it by about half an inch and with the needle and thread, stitch up the sides to hold it together. All right, almost done here. I like to sew up the sides. It just seems to make it lay flatter inside the casing. So I got down here to the end, do a couple stitches in place and one 
at a 90 degree angle to lock it in. Clip that thread off. Now I can pop that in and then with the same thread I'm just going to whip stitch this little opening closed. Honestly I really don't need to but I'm going to anyway and uh, then the sleeve will be done. Okay, so I had to go run some errands and I am back now and this is what it's looking like here. Okay, these sleeves are all elastified and now we're going to be working on a midriff which is this band that's going straight across here. There was two of them that were cut on a fold so I have already clipped the notches. I've got these dots cut out here with my little hole punch and um, I'm only going to be working with one of them right now. I'll set the other one aside but I need to make sure I mark that dot because that is going to tell me where the side seam placement is going to be. So I'm marking those and also up here at the center front I'm just going to draw a line. If you can see that just to remind me of where that center front position is. I'm just, like I said, I'm just taking one and I'm going to start by matching up my center with these two notches, match up the dot here with my side seam, match up a notch down here and the very edge. Once I have it all pinned together, I will sew the whole thing at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so this is what it's looking like right now. I just have this seam here and for funsies, I just pressed it down. You're not actually supposed to press it yet, but I wanted to see what it was going to look like. It's kind of neat. So what we're going to do is turn it over so that we are looking at the wrong side of our bodice. Get that all flapped down and we're going to sew the uh, midriff facing which is our second little piece here to this but what they want you to do first is um, they want you to turn it up 5 8 of an inch press it and trim off a quarter inch from the edge if you've watched long enough you know I don't like to press up ahead of time I just find it a lot easier to turn it up as I'm pinning it finally in place however I will go ahead and mark and trim off that extra 5 8 inch at the bottom just like this okay and by trimming off this quarter inch here um, I'm actually trimming off all of the little notches on one side but that's fine I will be using this side's notches to match everything up so now that that is gone the side that still has notches which is this side right here. I'm going to go ahead and match up and just like I did on the front, you know, matching notches, matching a dot for a side seam, matching the other ones, and come back and with this still folded straight up, do another 5 8 inch seam right here. So that's going to be going through all of this all the way across. All right, so I've got them sewn together here and the next step is an understitching step. But before I understitch, you can see I've got quite a bit of bulk like in this area here and things like that. It doesn't tell you to trim, it doesn't tell you to grade, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it down with pinking shears because I have kind of a, a lump going on, especially like in these areas and uh, pinking is magical because all of a sudden you just don't see that edge anymore. So let me finish pinking this straight across here. Okay, now it wants me to understitch the facing. So this part in here is the facing side. So what that means is what's left of my seam allowance here is going to get pushed towards the facing, okay? So if I look at it from the right side like this, this is how it's going to lay. Okay, this is my right side. My midriff is straight up. It's staying out of the way here. My facing piece is down. My seam allowances are down. And what I'm going to do is come in here and run a row of stitching, you know, between an eighth and a sixteenth inch away from this seam line, straight across all the way through the seam allowance the entire way. 
Okay, so that is done. That is my row of understitching there. So that's the inside, the outside, no stitching is visible, okay? So I need to set this whole piece aside for a minute because we are gonna get started on this part down here. Now for my version that I'm doing, I have um, white in the middle and my green on the side like that. So actually, um, because these are going to fray quite a bit, I am going to go ahead first of all and serge all the way around after I get my notches clipped. And on this piece, there's a little dot here. I think that is for pocket placement, but it's way up. It's a lot higher than I thought it would be, but we're going to assume that's for pocket placement right now. But I'm going to clip these, mark this circle, and then serge around both of these pieces. Okay, I'm back. So here is my yoke front, which was cut on a fold. And I've got my two side pieces here. So the dot is a pocket placement, so I know that that is the outside. Cause this piece is pretty symmetrical here. So basically, I'm going to be sewing these side front yoke pieces to the front straight down here, 5 eighths of an inch, press the seam allowances open, and then once I do that, I'm going to come back here and at a half inch seam allowance, sew a line of stitching straight across to stay stitch this to keep it from wanting to stretch out of shape. Alrighty, here it is, all sewn together, pressed open, searched, everything like that. So, set that up there. There's this one piece of piece number nine placket that we're going to deal with here. And this has a whole bunch of dots on it, mostly for button placement. But I wanted to show you my buttons. This is the ones I was telling you about that are very, very old. It's a very early plastic, but you know, it's the same color green. It is stars. So I thought those would be adorable and I have the right number. So it was meant to be. So, but I am not going to mark all of these right now. I'm just going to hang on to this piece. So when it comes time to actually sew the buttons on, I can just hold it up at that point and get button placement. But what they want you to do is fold under and press the sides at 3 8 of an inch. And because I do not eyeball things totally accurately, and apparently I didn't cut things terribly accurately also, I'm going to draw that line, that 3 8 inch line here. It's going to be easier to see it if I draw it on the right side. So on the right side then, at 3 8 of an inch, my pen does not run out of ink beforehand. I will be drawing two lines at 3 8 of an inch and that way when I'm at my ironing board I can press, turn and press that accurately. So I'll, both sides are going to end up pressed under like that. Okay, so we have an interesting construction technique going on here. I'm just marking my center front um, where we're going to be sewing it's just folded under. No, nothing is stitched here. I'm going to center this on that center front mark here and put a pin right here for right now. Now, we're going to be stitching it straight across here. Um, I do it probably at about a half inch, okay? But they want it stitched here because we're going to be going ahead and doing the whole skirt first. So all of this, it's just going to be kind of hanging out for a while. So what I'm going to do is fold it up a few times here and just pin it so that it's not going to get into any trouble while I'm working on the skirt. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and sew this on at about a half inch seam allowance. That way when I do the five eighths, it won't show. And um, then we're going to get started putting ruffles on. Okay, so here is my front. That little thing is stitched on, whoops, up here. It's stitched on here, and I'm just going to set that aside for a minute because I'm going to be doing my back yoke, which is green. The whole thing is green. So just like the front, I'm going to clip, clip, clip these notches, draw my little circle, and then serge all the way around both of these pieces. Okay, so there's my stay stitching at the top. 
everything surged, I need to draw my little dots on. But um, I was going to tell you, I'm still getting used to my new 201 machine, and it is so smooth. That feed bed is so glidey. It's like ice skating when you're sewing. And um, my Meister that I've been sewing on for decades has an extremely aggressive feed dogs. And I'm used to that right now, you know, because sewing machines are like cars. When you've been driving one for long, um, you know, you can still drive. You can get into other cars and you can drive, but they feel weird in the beginning, you know? It's kind of like that. So I am getting used to the very ice skatey, glidey type of sewing. Anyhow, with all that being said, sometimes my stay stitching is not completely straight because I'm like that. But we will endure. Okay, so I've got these drawn on. Now the ruffles there was a separate front ruffle upper tier from the back ruffle upper tier. So I'm going to go grab those. So I'm going to start here with the back pieces. This is my two back yokes. I uh, go together this way. Okay. So I have two piece number 13s. This is the bottom of the pocket placement. So we'll be marking this circle. Clip some notches and I am surging around each one of these pieces because otherwise it will fray quite dramatically. Dramatically. Once I have it surged all the way around, I'm going to need to come up here at the top and do two rows of gathering stitches on each one of these. Okay, this isn't a hugely long piece at this point. So it shouldn't be that bad. I don't even, probably not even going to change my bobbin because it's such a short piece. But once I get to the bottom pieces, I definitely will be. Hello, welcome to another day. Um, I'm having some trouble with my microphone, so I'm trying to troubleshoot that. And extremely foggy today. It's like almost a whiteout out there. And we're going to be getting new windows put into the house over the next few days. So at some point, these these windows, these old ones will be replaced and I'm going to be popping in and out, you know, orchestrating things. So with all of that, hopefully my microphone is still working and I am going to be um, putting the middle tier of the ruffle onto the back yoke piece next. So this is my back yoke piece here. Remember, I have it stay stitched at the top. This is the bottom. The side with the dot for the pocket is the outside center back here and of course it's upside down and this is one of my back pieces and the side with the dot for the pocket is also this side so I need to make sure I turn it that way and the only main difference is that um, there's a little notch right up here and I need to match up this notch with the center back and that is because there is not very much um, gathering in the very center back because they are giving you room for a zipper and everything. So between this back corner and that little notch, not too much gathering. So now that I have this notch pinned, I can go ahead and pin the outer side over here. And then I'm going to split the difference between these two points to get to where that center point's going to be, which is right here. And now I'm just going to figure out which one of these gathering threads was my bobbin thread. It's a little more tricky when they match. And uh, pull my bobbin threads to gather this up. In case you ever lose track of which is which, one is a lot easier to pull. So before I like give a huge yank, I usually give a gentle little tug on both the back threads and the front threads and the one that gathers really quickly, that's the bobbin. So that's the one I use. So I'm just going to pull in all of my gathers, get them averaged out and pin this on. All right, all pinned together, ready to sew it straight across at 5 eighths of an inch. Once that is done, I need to turn it and press the seam allowance up towards the yoke. This is it with my top stitching on there and it's all ready to go. So I'm going to have to do a very similar process with my front yoke. Okay, so here is the bottom of my front yoke, the part that I sewed this little strip onto. 
that's where the ruffle is going to go. Now on the ruffle, there is a dot right here. And the only thing that I can think that that dot is supposed to match up to is um, the seam line for one of these bottom ruffles. But if you remember, I pieced my bottom ruffle so I have seams all over the place. I'm going to omit that mark because it's kind of pointless at this point. So, but I did clip my notches. There is a side dot over here. I've gone ahead and I'm going to punch that out. I'm going to mark that. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did with this one for the, for the back where I serge completely around it and run two rows of gathering stitches across the top. Okay, I've got my two rows of gathering stitches in and this time I put a pin on my bobbin side so I don't have to investigate that. So if this is the right side, this is the top. I'm going to flip this over, center this little piece on my center front right here like so and then there was a notch over here here it is on my fabric I need to find that on this piece and I'm going to pin this match up the notch and then gather all of my threads alrighty so I've got it kind of gathered here to the end and I am just going to tie all of this long tail hanging out here in a knot so I can trim it off before I go to the machine because I don't need that kind of headache right now. So um, I did have the window guys here earlier and I do have two new windows in here. I have new windows all over my house. They're going to be back tomorrow to do more trim work and finish up another big window. And um, you never know how much junk you really have until you have to pull everything away from every window in your house. There's so much stuff that you find just laying on the floor behind pieces of furniture and things. But anyway, that has made me want to further declutter my sewing room because I'm finding random baskets of stuff. You know the, the, the containers that are just like a little basket or a box that you just throw miscellaneous stuff into and then that one fills up so you get another one? I gotta clean those out. So I'm starting a new thing every time, every day. I'm gonna clean out one of those random stuff containers until my sewing room is organized. I did one and I feel good about that. So anyway, you probably don't have that problem. It's probably just a me thing. But I've got this pinned on. I'm gonna sew it at 5 8 And then just like the other one, after I'm done, I'm going to press the seam allowance towards the yoke and then come back and top stitch along here just for reinforcement and making it lay flatter. Okie doke. So with that front piece out of the way, the next thing I'm going to tackle are these pockets. So um, I'm not going to be putting these marks on yet. I will soon though. What I need to do is serge around the edges of all four of these pocket pieces. Okay, so now that I have these pockets surged around, I didn't want to mark these dots yet because I knew I was going to iron them. Because when you surge around a curve, it can get out of sorts. So I like to iron that to flatten it all out. So now that that is done and I won't be erasing my mark, I can align this back up over here and with my heat erasable pen, mark those two little circles on the back side of each pocket piece. Okay, so for what I do with this side front, I'm going to do with this side front and this side back, okay? But I'm only going to make you endure one time of watching it. There is a notch in here, and what I want to do is match up the notch, which is right here on my uh, pocket with right here. Um, the dots are going to come in handy for stitching lines, but you can just use your notch as a guideline for uh, pinning it in place. And then, once I have them all pinned straight across here, I'm going to sew them, but the first line of stitching is a smaller seam allowance, usually, yes, and they want us to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance for this first one, so it's a quarter inch uh, shallower than usual. Okay, so I'm over here at my machine and I have my stitches at my 3 8 of an inch. 
Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is understitch it. So I keep my seam allowances going this way underneath the pocket, open my pocket up really nicely, and I'm going to run a row of stitching right here. So that is on top of the seam allowances, okay, and it's going to hold your pocket nice and steady. So I'm just going to open it up really nicely, feeling that the seam allowances is over on this side, and just run my row of stitching all the way down. And I think I figured out what my problem was earlier with this machine. I, I totally redid everything on it, and when I set my pressure presser foot height, I did it with the um, feed dogs up, which is what I thought you should do, but it was just too ice skatey. So I reset it with my feed dogs down, and now I have enough grip that I can feel secure with what I'm doing, so that is nice. So there is my understitching right here, and I'm going to do the same thing for all four pockets. All right, a couple days later, again, I keep getting farther and farther behind on this, but it's, it's going to go fast now. I think it will. So now what I'm going to be doing is sewing my back pieces to my front pieces here. So I'm just going to match everything up. One of the main points that I want to make sure matches up is the seam right here. I'm just going to try to stick a pin through it. The seam right there, if you can see my pen wiggling, I want to make sure that that is lined up with the seam over here. And I got my pin right in this little corner so I can stick that in there and just kind of hold it hold it still while I get everything else matched up. So up here on top, gonna get everything situated. And the reason I did this first is you can, might be able to see, this pocket is actually about a quarter inch lower than the other one. And it's more important for me that it matches up and looks right on the outside than on the inside of the pocket. That doesn't matter to me. So that's why I'm matching that up first. Alrighty, so when I open it, you can see this line is going to match up. That's the key for me here, especially because I'm using two different colors. If I wasn't using two different colors, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you know, I am. Um, Alright, I have my dots on this side. For some reason, I think I ironed the uh, other piece and it disappeared. So we're going to mark this side. So the way that we're going to sew these on is using these dots that they gave us as placement dots. Let me get my little ruler here. Starting up here at the top at 5 eighths, I'm coming down to this dot. Okay, so I'll just start up here, come down to that dot. At that dot, make a 90 degree turn and start coming in here. And at 5 eighths, an inch from the outside edge, you know, whatever that should be, because they are staggered a little bit. I'm going to sew it all the way around here. Okay, now as I'm coming back, I'm going to mark this side where this dot is here. I'm gonna, that's at 5 eighths of an inch in, so I'm just gonna draw that line down a little bit here. I'm gonna take this seam, I'm gonna put a pin here so I can hold it together really well. So I'm coming around here, coming up here. Where I hit this line, I will then turn, go up to that dot, leaving my needle down, flip everything over, and then come all the way down here. So it's there around, up, and then back. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so I've got this sewn the way that I was showing you. And so before I can press this open, what I'm going to need to do is clip uh, my back seam allowance below and above my pocket. So it's easy to see. This is the front and this is the back. So just below this pocket stitching, I'm clipping just the back seam allowance so I can press this open down here and up here just above the pocket, also making a clip. So now I can go over to my ironing board, press this open, and press the pocket towards the front. 
So open down here towards the front here and open up here. All right, it's time for a chat, which means I've run into an issue. And let me tell you what it is. Okay, I cut out size 16. And the body size, the size 16, is, let me see, right here, it is calling for size 16 to have a 40 inch hip. Reasonable, right? Now, with this huge gathered skirt, I was assuming that there would be a lot of ease in the hip. Oh, no, no. And when I was cutting it out, I was looking and on all of my yoke pieces, I did not see a hip measurement written. You know, sometimes they have like a little, a little mark and a little what the hip measurement is for all those. I didn't see it. I didn't bother to measure the actual pieces. You should measure the actual pieces because now that I have this big long thing sewn together, okay, I said, you know what, I am going to measure that because that doesn't look that, that wide. I mean, it looks wide, but you know, my hips are wide. I got a measurement of 40 inches, okay? Now, here's the thing. Usually, they incorporate ease into the hip, all right? And because my hips tend to be on the heavier side of 40 inches, I usually don't mind because if it's a full skirt, it doesn't matter if it's an inch or so bigger or smaller. I cannot get this to come all the way around my dress form and form a center seam in the back. It is too tight. Too tight. That's so frustrating. So at this point there is something I can do and I'll show you what I'm going to do. But just letting you know, make sure that you keep an eye on this part right here because wow, that's very tight. I might not have measured it entirely accurately, you know, when I was just stretching my, my tape across because of the pockets and everything. But yeah, it's very tight. First, I just wanted to show you on my dress form what I'm talking about. So up here at the waist, I can kind of make it work because my waist isn't my issue. It's my hips that are my issue. And look at this. Look at that. So at this point, if I have a standard seam allowance, I need at least three and a half inches just to be able to come straight across. I want more than that because I want to be able to actually move without it binding on me. Okay, so I am going to go extreme here and at the bottom part I'm going to add three inches to each side. Up here at the top I'm going to add one inch to each side. Again, it should match, you know, but I'm going to give myself one inch so that when I actually sew it on to the dress, I can make sure that it's going to work. If there's extra, I can just trim that off at that point. Now, keep in mind, out of that huge four yards of fabric, this is all I have left, you know. So I can add it, but I don't have a whole lot left here. So this is the piece that I'm going to be attaching it to. And um, the first thing I'm going to be doing is marking down here where the top and the bottom is. And actually, I need to slice this open. I have it on a fold. I'm just going to cut that fold open really quick so I have two pieces on top of each other. Okay, so I just cut that off. I have two pieces here. I am just going to actually draw along the bottom here so I get that same curve working here and up here for a little bit, okay? So this piece is gonna get sewn on here. It's gonna be like this. Okay, so down here at the bottom, um, remember I said I want to add three inches to each side because I'm going, you know, go big or go home. So this is one, two, three inches. And I'm also adding five eighths of an inch for seam allowance. Okay. So down here, I am going one inch and then adding five eighths for a seam allowance right here. Okay. And so that should give me a small little sliver up here at the top. And then down here, again, I will have 
seam allowance on each side. So I'm going to end up with about two and a half inches extra on each side on the bottom. That should work. So let me just go ahead and cut this out. I'm concerned that my bottom angle is going to get thrown off at this point. So let me go ahead and pin this on and I'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I have just pinned it roughly where I'll be stitching and just folded up the bottom just to get a look to see how this is going to be. And you know, I think that I need to shorten this side some to make sure that this length is the same as this length. Otherwise, it's going to come down to a point here. Okay, so my length, oops, wrong side here. My length that I'm attaching to my pattern piece is uh, seven and a quarter. So if I move over here from the top and I measure down to seven and a quarter, it's going to be right here. It's going to take off, you know, about a quarter inch. So I'll just kind of taper it in there like that at about the halfway point. And now I think I should be okay and not have any of that, um, that point happening. But just to make sure that I keep track of them, I'm writing a CF, actually it's CB, center back, on the side that I just trimmed just so I make sure I know what is what because you know we're just kind of improvising here. Now as far as the white part, I am going to have to from about this point pull off all of my stitching and top stitching here so that this piece is free and open so that I can pull out some of those gathers and extend this part to cover this. So before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and go and serge around each one of these pieces. So with these two pieces serged around here, it is time to just quietly and contemplatively open up this seam so that I can extend it and uh, I may have to make new gathering stitches because I trimmed my gathering stitches really short after I clipped, after I sewed it, because who needs those? And I think that when I extend it, I, uh, I'm not going to have enough. So let me, let me get this picked open and I'll come up with a plan. So I haven't unpicked the whole thing yet, but while I have about, you know, maybe four inches unpicked, that's big enough for me to go ahead and sew this on. So the part labeled center back is over here. This part is just open this up, unfolded that. I'm going to sew this at five eighths of an inch and press this seam open. I'll do that on both sides. All right, thankfully, I think it's going to work out because remember we don't gather for like the last inch, inch and a half or so because I need seam allowance for a zipper and I don't want gathers in that spot. So when I opened it up, I opened it up to about like a couple inches away from the side here and I'm just pinning it together and stretching it out and I think it's going to work out. So get this done go back over to my machine and from about this point where I opened it up sew it across here at 5 8 of an inch, press the whole seam allowance towards the top and then come back and top stitch it and I'm gonna call that good. Okay, so I need to find a zipper and the pattern calls for a 22 inch invisible zipper. And I was just thinking, you know, it has been a long time since I have seen a current pattern call for anything but an invisible zipper. It's like, are do they not doing standard zippers in patterns anymore? Um, a standard zipper, especially, a, you know, hardcore metal standard zipper is a whole lot stronger in general than an invisible zipper. So what I have is I have a whole bunch of invisible zippers that are 20 inches and I just got a new pack of invisible zippers that are 24 inches. So going longer would be a fine thing, but I don't see a light green in here. I could go with gray. I could go with off-white. I think I like the gray better. I mean, go with steely gray. So I will be doing an invisible zipper for two reasons. One is if I 
um, was going to put a standard zipper in, I would be putting it in as a lapped zipper. And I usually want a bigger seam allowance for a lap zipper. And with adding that piece on the bottom and everything, I just don't think it's worth the strain. Um, so I won't be using this one. We'll be doing another lap zipper at some point. But I'm just curious. I got to take a peek and see if anyone's still using standard zippers. So the zipper I'm going to be using is 24 inches long, which is not a problem. I have plenty of room. So got that selection out of the way. And what I need to do now is go ahead and get my bodice top sewn on to the skirt. Okay, so first I'm going to put my skirt down here. And look, you can't even see this big section that I added on. It blends. I'm happy. We're just going to move on and put that memory behind us here. So I'm putting this right side up. I'm going to grab my bodice piece here. And the inside, the facing for that waistband midriff part, it's just going to get folded up out of the way. Uh, if I remember right, I have some things marked on here. Not seeing any circles, but I do have notches. So I'm going to go ahead and try my best to get this matched up here. Let me go ahead and get this all pinned. Once I have it pinned, I'm going to sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance straight down here, you know, keeping my facing piece out of the way. Okay, so I've got it all sewn together here. And now what I need to do is open this whole thing up and press this seam allowance up so it is inside of here. But when you're sewing it, make sure you get that center piece. Where is it? This thing out of the way. I almost stitched over a little piece of it. So getting that part out of the way there. So I'm going to go ahead and where am I? Right here. Press this seam allowance here up into the waistband. Okay, so got that done. Coming back over here and I need to get the facing on this midriff piece all anchored down. So remember this is the side that I trimmed a quarter inch off a long time ago it feels like. So basically what I'm doing is just turning under the edge just a little bit and pinning it so that it lines up to where my stitching is. If I can find my pins, there you are pins. Okay so I'm just gonna pin that in place there come to the next one here and keep going all the way across and they are asking for you to slip stitch this so we can do that so right across here I'm just going to get a matching green needle and thread and slip stitch all the way across here just closing that midriff piece in okay so I am almost done here whip stitching all the way across and I thought I would mention something because I haven't mentioned it in a long time. Which is when you're hand sewing, it actually makes a difference when you pull a, a thread off of a spool that's, you know, a standard spool of thread that's made for using on a sewing machine. The side you pull off is the side that should lead in sewing. The side that you clip, so let's say I thread the needle with this side and I clip this, this is the side I should tie a knot in, which means I'm always going to be threading in this direction as I go through my fabric. It reminded me to tell you because I did not do that the last thread that I did and it wrinkles and it ties in knots a whole lot more than the other way because of the direction that the threads are wrapped and everything. Um, yeah, it, it'll knot up on you whereas going this way, it's going to lay a lot flatter. So with that, as soon as I get done getting all the way to the edge here, what I need to do before I put my zipper in is um, I'm going to just quickly surge just straight across here. I cut my bodice pieces on the selvage edge. So this is fine. This is not going to unravel, but this might give me just a little bit of trouble. So I'm just going to quickly surge just across that. Actually, before I put in the zipper, I need to deal with this front placket piece while everything is still wide open. So I'm just going to stretch it up here and line it up with the very bottom of my neckline. Pin it in place. I'm going to pin it in a few different places to hold it nice and straight here. 
and then I'll be coming on my sewing machine and uh, top stitching it down along the edges, both of them with just a regular straight stitch. So there is my stitching, holding this big stripe up the middle on. Now the pattern is gonna tell you don't put the zipper in until you get the bottom tier on. To me, that's just too heavy. Um, I've, if I can do it with just the one tier on, it'll be less weight and that is fine with me because the way I put in invisible zippers is I put the zipper in first and then I come back and sew the rest of the bottom seam. So if I can put in my zipper first, that is done, you know, stabilize it with something here and then go back and put the rest of the skirt on and then sew up the bottom seam. That will work for me. Um, I just don't want to have to be throwing a whole bunch of weight around and this is a lot smaller to deal with than this plus this big ruffle down here. It's just so it's easier for me to maneuver. So with that, let me get my zipper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is up here at the top, I'm gonna make a line three quarters of an inch down, okay? Um, I know my standard seam allowance is five eighths, but by doing it an extra eighth of an inch down, I can make sure that I have plenty of room so the top of the zipper isn't gonna stick in the back of my neck. Okay, so let me mark that on both of these sides. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna to go to my ironing board and iron my zipper. So for an invisible zipper, you wanna kind of unwrap this coil so it lays flat. It comes like this. As soon as you zip it, it wants to curl up. For putting it on, you wanna kind of unwrap your coil and iron it so it'll lay somewhat flat. So now I have it ironed, okay? And don't zip it up again because as soon as you zip it up again, that coil will iron itself back out. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna do one side at a time. You know, it's up to you which side you wanna do. I am going to arbitrarily choose this side to start with. And what I need to do is put my zipper face down. I got my fabric face up, putting my zipper face down, okay? And the place that I'm gonna be sewing is as close to this little coil line here as I can. Probably be right around there, okay? So if this is my stitch line, the distance from that to the edge is just over a quarter inch. So if I want my stitch line to act like a seam, okay, and I want my seam to be the same 5 eighths as everything else, and if this is about a quarter inch, that means I'm gonna need to lay this tape about a quarter inch to 3 eighths inch away from the edge. Now for me, because I like having guidelines to follow here, I'm just gonna go ahead and with my heat erasable pen, and draw a line all the way down at a quarter inch, just to give me a guideline to place the edge of my zipper tape onto as I'm stitching it. Okay, so I have my line drawn. And remember, the zipper I'm using is two inches longer than is called for in the pattern. That is okay, I'm actually not gonna be sewing all the way to the very bottom here. I'll probably be stopping right around here and uh, that will be fine. It won't hurt my feelings at all. So since I'm gonna be sewing, again with my zipper face down like this, I use a water-soluble double-sided basting tape when I do zippers. And it's water soluble, so as soon as I wash it, whatever residual stickiness might be on the zipper and fabric comes off. So, very carefully, I'm gonna flip the zipper up so I'm looking at the right side, and for some reason my tape doesn't feel very sticky right there. Okay, I'm gonna run a row of my tape, making sure it's not turning. It wants to turn, we're not going to let it turn. I'm starting up here, about where the top of the stopper is, just placing my tape down. It's got what? It's got a uh, paper on top. So now that I have my tape stuck on here, I'm just gonna use a pin to get it started and peel that paper backing off of the tape. 
like this all the way down very carefully. Now flip my zipper right side down again and start placing it up here so that the stopper on my zipper is just below that three quarter inch mark that we drew and the edge of the zipper tape is going along the quarter inch line that I drew. I'm just sticking it and pressing it down as I go. I find that this works a lot better for me than pins when I'm putting on a zipper. All right, so this will be the first time for me putting on an invisible zipper on my Singer 201. I don't have the same kind of foot um, that I use for my invisible zipper on my other machine, but the 201 has a very narrow little, little pinky toe on the presser foot, and I think I can use that as a guide to run along the coils. So let me give it a shot. Okay, so the standard foot on the 201 was too wide, I want to show you. And yes, I did zip it up um, just because I had to see if it was going to work. So let me open this up again here. So on my standard foot, this was the closest position I could get. Come on, this one right here, which was too far. My zipper would have been exposed. So I was digging through things and I found this, which I think is as close to an invisible zipper foot as I can get. My only problem is that this little slot here is dead center. I usually like it to be offset just a little bit. But I popped it on and when I sewed, like I said, it was dead center. So I had to kind of be very careful and make sure that my zipper stayed, you know, flattened as possible. And it sewed extremely close to it. So, but I wanted to zip it up just to make sure it would actually zip because it seemed like it was too close to the coils. But since I'm doing this, now is a good time because I can make a line right here where this is and a line right here at the bottom of that little midriff belt thing and also down here actually it should be like right there um, where this blue line is okay and that way when I go to match it up on the other side I can use those points to line it up together all right I actually had to pick a few stitches in here that got into my coils Restitch it so we are good on this side now. So, to get started with the other side, the first thing I'm going to do is flip everything over this way and with my zipper sitting here face up, so I see my little tab here, I'm going to put a row of tape down the right side of this side of my zipper. All right, so this is the one that I've already stitched on and I just have my whole dress folded in half, right sides together, so that this will be kind of close over here. So remember I have these marks on here and that will come in very handy. The first thing I need to do though is pull off my paper on the back of my tape. All right, so I've got my paper pulled off, and what I'm going to do is start with the important landmarks. So, oh, you know what I forgot to do? You know it. I forgot to draw my quarter inch guideline. So I'm just going to set that up there, and hopefully my sticky will not disappear. Grab my little ruler and draw my little quarter inch guideline all the way down. All right, so now that that is done, taking my little landmarks here and matching them up with where my belt area is, placing the edge of my tape where my guideline is and get that marked. Then there's also one down here where this blue line is. So I'm gonna get that one marked, okay? And then just average everything out out in between. If it looks like something's too big, well, you know what, I'm just gonna stretch it, ease it, whatever I need to do, because it's these points that cannot move. Those are the important ones. So that lays well, and then up here at the very top, remember where our line is at three quarter inch, I'm placing my little stopper, again, just below that. 
and let all of this line up here and just press it down. So I am down here at the very bottom and you can see my stitching doesn't start till right here. So this is about where my stitching is gonna start. I'm not worried about this. Again, my zipper started out a couple inches too long. So just to make sure that does not want to move, I'm just gonna stick a little pin there. It's already being held by the tape. That's just like a belt and suspenders kind of deal. So now with my little invisible zipper foot. I'm going to be careful to roll the coils away and very carefully stitch right down here, right next to the coils, like that, all the way down. All right, I wanted to show you, yay, you guys probably know this because you probably use this kind of foot all the time, but I just figured it out. Um, the center notch is not where the coils go through. The flat part, this foot has like a plastic down there and that is holding the coils open okay so as it holds well usually the coils open um, then I can see to sew it straight down on the place that I need it to so yay that's really cool that's gonna work out a lot better than what I was trying to do before. Again, my usual route for a invisible zipper is with my other machine, which is a high shank machine. This is a standard low shank machine, so I can't use it, but you know, we get by and it all works out. Okay, so I zipped it up and everything is matched up really well. So if I unzip it here, Okay, it comes all the way down at this point, so that should be easy to get in and out of. But by using the tape and being able to match up those points, you're able to get a zipper that matches up where you need it to. You know, I love that. At this point, this is open down here. I don't care. I'm going to leave it open until I get my bottom ruffle sewed on. So I popped it on my dress form just to see what it looks like. And right now it looks like a very, very mini skirt. But if I turn her around, come on, you can see that, yay, it closes all the way down. Everything's going to be fine. It looks like it was meant to do all of what it is doing. So I'm happy with that. <sighs> just straighten everything out here. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to call it a night and we will work on the bottom ruffle tomorrow. Good morning, new day here and gonna finish this dress today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next thing I'm going to be working on are the facings, obviously, because that's what you're looking at. And what I need to do is cut out a piece of interfacing for each of these. Yes, of course, this is the very light interfacing that I'm using. At this point, would you expect anything less from me? So on the front pieces, you cut one on a fold. The back pieces, you cut two of them. This is just the traditional basic interfacing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these and fuse these off camera and I will be right back. Okay, so here is my little piece. I don't know if you can tell, I have interfacing fused here. And while I was over there, I went ahead and surged around just the outside edge of my uh, pieces because this part and this part are going to be enclosed, so I'm not too worried about them fraying. But this one, definitely. So now it's time to sew these together. And when I cut it, I cut the center back part here on the selvage. So I'm not surging that, and it's going to be nice and neat. I wish my camera would focus a little bit better on that. So I'm going to put this here and this here in the usual way. Sew it at 5 8 of an inch, and then press that seam allowance open. Now understand, I used green stay stitching here, and that might come back to bite me. But we will just deal with it at this point. So I am putting right sides together. I'm just gonna stick a, a little pin down here at the very center front to hold it for a moment. I'm gonna match up my shoulder seams. And then finally in the very back, so this is what my back looks like. You know, I can open it up flat still. And I'm just going to bring this over and match it up at the very top here. So I'm gonna be sewing this um, 
first just around the neckline. I'll probably add a few more pins here and there, but starting up here at 5 8 7 inch. And remember, we started our zipper at 3 quarter inch, so it should be down out of the way. So 5 8 7 inch down all the way around. After I come all the way around to here, then I'm going to do a separate seam coming this way. So let me get this first one around the neck first. All right, so hopefully you can see I have a row of stitching going right here, okay? So for the sides, I'm just going to, you know, keep them together, pin it, and do a row of stitching here. I'm not getting really close to the teeth. I'm actually out just a little bit, and I want to show you on this one. So here is the teeth. From the base of the teeth, I'm probably like an eighth of an inch or so before the stitching, okay? So what I did after I sewed this is I clipped it like an angle this way, an angle this way to get bulk out of this corner. Um, and I also trimmed this inner part so that I wouldn't have extra thickness there. So now I can just go ahead and turn this side. So I need to um, do the stitching on the other side before I can go to the next step, which is going to be understitching this edge here. All right, so with my sides and corners done, what I need to do is make several clips, especially around this back part where it curves quite a bit so that that will be able to flex and open nicely. I'm going to make a few clips in the front here and in the very front all the way down to where my threads are in these corners. I'm going to clip that too. I'm just a clipping machine this morning. Okay, so whatever I did here, I'm going to do on the other side. So what I need to do now is understitch my neckline. And so I'm going to turn it, and we're not going to be able to get stitching all the way into the corner. Get as close as you can. I can usually get within an inch or so, you know, whatever my presser foot can sit in there. But the seam allowances go towards the facing, okay? And we understitch on the private side, the side nobody sees, which is the facing. And so with the seam allowances under here, I'm going to do a row of stitching on the facing side, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch in, all the way around the front, getting as close to this opposite corner here as I can, and just call that good. Alrighty, so these corners are pretty bulky. I went to turn it and it was still too thick. So I'm shaving off quite a bit here in this corner, but hoping that that will pull it out nicely. Um, my fabric is thicker, but it's not that thick, so you know, making it work here. Okay, so now the understitching is going to make it so that my facing is going to want to fold in really nicely around here. And what do I see? I see, I see some chunkiness here. So to fix that chunkiness, actually, I'm going to come back in here and trim some more. I happen to have my pinking shears here handy. So I am just going to trim off about half of that back seam allowance. And I should have trimmed off some of this here also because that's very thick. So I'm just going to do one layer at a time and take off some of that. All right, let's see if that helps here. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. So um, I'm, I haven't ironed this yet. Once I iron it, it'll lay perfectly flat. But I think that that's going to work. If you can see, there is my understitching right here. And it rolls the whole edge under. Okay, so from the outside, you don't see any stitching. Okay, from the inside, you do. That's what I want. So I'm going to trim and turn the other side, go over to my ironing board, press my whole neckline nicely. If it looks like I need to pink the edge up here in the front too, I will do that. It's more of a straight line, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Alrighty, so I have my neckline pressed, and I did go ahead and end up trimming all of my seam allowances with my pinking shears. You know, at a certain point, it's like, why not? So I did, and I think it 
takes out bulk, makes it lay nicely. Um, now, this facing is not attached at this point, and looking at their instructions, they're not telling you to attach it everywhere. They're just telling you to attach it here and down here. I can give that a try. And if I don't think that that is strong enough, I can always come back and, you know, invisibly sew it in the back, just catching a thread at a time, sewing it down. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do with just a needle and thread, invisibly sew the facing underneath this little stripe here and to the seam allowances up here because it's already attached back here. So that's easy. Okay, so at this point I have most of the dress done. It's just the bottom part of the ruffle that I still need to do. So if you remember, I had to piece these together to get enough fabric. So what I'm gonna do is serge around my individual bottom ruffle pieces and there's someone working on my window. If you can see, they're putting the trim on. So just, it's okay. Not peeping Tom, taking care of it. Anyway, I'm gonna serge around all of my pieces and then I'm gonna sew them together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press everything open so I'm working with one enormous piece. And at that point, with everything in one big piece, I'm gonna put in my gathering stitches um, with my heavy duty thread in the bobbin. That's the plan. Okay, so here are my gathering stitches and I used my super thread in my bobbin. And my bobbin side is actually the right side. And that is because I wanted to look at this side while I was sewing it to make sure that my seam allowances would lay nice and flat. So as you can see, I have a lot of seams because I piece this. And so because of that, what I'm gonna do is just basically get the ends together, which I know will be my center back, find the midpoint, which I know will be my center front. So right here, I can put a little mark right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a line and a CF right there for center front. And then I'm gonna go halfway between there. And I know that that will be the equivalent of the side seam. And with those, those places, those landmarks marked, I can go ahead and get this pinned onto my dress so I can start pinning it on. Okay, so my back of my dress is still open underneath the zipper, okay? And so what I'm going to be doing is just finding my end here and opening this up, pinning it together at the edges. So I'm gonna pin my back, my side, and my center front to get it started. And then once I have that, I'll just kind of split the difference between the other positions. All right, so here's my center back. Here is my side seam. So I'm just gonna pull it apart until those two match up. And then that's gonna give me my next position. And just keep doing that over and over until I have a pin every couple inches. There's probably about four inches in between these pins, and that's good. That way I can gather this and I'll be able to see really easily when this is nice and flat. So I'm gonna pin it this far apart all the way around. Okay, so I have it all pinned together now. So I'm gonna sew it at 5 8 of an inch, and then turn it so that the seam allowance is going up, and then come back and top stitch it here. So that'll have two rows of stitching to hold on my ruffle very securely. Getting there, here's the bottom ruffle sewed on. Can you see my top stitching there? So what I need to do right now, I have these, my whole dress turned inside out. And I need to match up this layer here. Make sure that that is exact pin it together and I need to sew up this whole back seam. Now remember my zipper is longer and it is not attached at the bottom and that actually makes it a lot easier for coming in here and stitching from this point straight down. So that is what I'm going to do at 5 8 7 inch just getting as close as I can to where my zipper stitching is right here getting in there and continuing it down at 5 8 7 inch 
uh, keeping this point where it is all the way down. Once I have it stitched down, I will be coming back and pressing this seam allowance open. So I've got it all sewed up the back. So now here's the back. Here's that point right here that I was matching up and it looks good. Uh, let's see, the zipper ends right here. And by sewing the seam after you put the invisible zipper in, you don't get that funky pucker that can sometimes appear right here. So that's my preferred method. So there's only two more things to do. One is to do the hem. And so that's what we're gonna do. Now this is just a straight edge, easy peasy. I am simply going to fold it up about half an inch and then fold it up again like about 5 8 of an inch. Just a fairly narrow hem. I'm just going to sew it by machine with a straight stitch and press it. And uh, that part will be done. So the last thing I need to do, I just finished that hem, is sew these buttons on. But I am respacing them because I didn't quite like where they were. I'm putting them every inch and a half. And I think that that is going to work out for me. So let me get all of this staggered and get my little buttons. Where'd you go? Here's my little buttons. And I am just going to sew them on. They're just for decoration. So every place I have a pin, that's where I'm going to sew them on. All right, here she is all done. And if you want to see what the final sleeve looks like, here she is. So it comes up actually fairly high but we have some wiggle room here so I'm thinking it's going to be comfortable I'll tell you in a moment um, my buttons kind of blended in you know but they're there and they're cute and in the back everything looks like it's going to fit well now this is very snug down here in the bottom you know such as life I set my zipper slightly lower than the very top just because my own personal preference I don't like the top of the zipper digging into the back of my neck um, if you don't want that just don't start your zipper at three quarter inch down start it at a, um, five eighths but yeah I like it I'm gonna go ahead and try it on So here it is, and you know what? It's a very comfortable dress. I have to admit, uh, pulling up that invisible zipper, that long, very fitted up here invisible zipper was a little tricky on my own. And um, the invisible zippers, they don't have a little hole in the, the little tab, so you can't put one of those yankers, you know, those pull things on there anymore. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. But I could get it done. And it went together actually very smoothly, except for, you know, my hip addition here, but that's just a me, my body personally kind of thing. I like it. I like it. It's easier to move around in. I think it's pretty flattering the way that they have it all cut. It's pretty flattering and the sleeves are so big, super comfortable. So it's a win-win for me. I'm not too sure that having the two different colors, oh, my wind chime is out of control this morning. I'm not too sure that having two different colors is the best. Um, I think that it would look beautiful in a single color. I just didn't have enough fabric. And so, you know, you do what you do. But I like it. I hope you like it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful white houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living. My bucolic life.